it's nothing so wonderful, I presume, uh, among mankind as freedom of thought, freedom to believe, freedom to teach, uh, far above the belly, having food and nourishment is the food of the mind. Uh, he that has a strong mind will not be a slave to any man. <laughs> uh, the strength of a nation is the strength of the mind. You destroy the mind and you destroy the nation. What an honor it is to teach the truths of the Almighty and how glad we are for your presence and we are glad to see you. God richly bless you. We are studying a pertinent truth, truth that has to do with the destiny of the world in which you live. We are living in the last days when the Word of God teaches us in, in 1 Timothy 4 and 1 that says, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And so uh, we are living in those days right now, and we need an army. God needs an army. God needs an invading army. Uh, God does not want the church on the defensive today, always protecting itself. What am I going to do? No, change things. Move the world. We are the world changers. We have the authority. We have the direction. We have the power. We ought to utilize it magnificently <laughs> at this moment in history to change men and women from the power of the devil to the power of God. In this series of lessons that we are presenting on, on demons and, and deliverance, uh, we have come to the uh, lesson called Biblical Names for Satan. If you have an enemy, uh, how do you identify uh, such an enemy? Uh, how do you know? Uh, how do you know? If you have the teaching syllabus, uh, turn to page 13, and we will begin this lesson together. Uh, this is uh, another one of these long lessons, and so we will seek to do the best that we can uh, in, in covering the material. Satan is the enigmatic uh, personality of our, our universe. Uh, from his names, you can, you can identify uh, some of his uh, things that he does on the face of this earth. Uh, he is mentioned in the Bible, in God's Word, over 200 times under many different names. God did not want you to miss the fact and the truth. There is an enemy of your soul, and that you have the divine thrust to put him down and to put him out, and that you are not a victim of his works, but you are triumphant by the risen Lord Jesus that put his foot on his head and subdued him and came forth with the keys of death and hell. And in, in, in Acts 1 and 8, and he says, and I give you power, the word power is authority, and I give you authority after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so we have the authority to deal in these matters. In our lesson today on biblical names for Satan, we will begin with number one, that he is called a prince. And that means he is not a person of low degree. Uh, he had one time been an archangel. Uh, he has now the designation of a prince. You will discover that in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. It says that he is the prince of the power of the air. So a prince speaks to us of an exalted position of leadership and also rulership. The prince is a ruler. Uh, power uh, speaks to us of a, of a sphere uh, of rulership, which probably is uh, uh, in an area above the earth and around the earth, that he is a prince and power, a prince and a power. Uh, you know, he has the name, and also he has the area to rule over, the prince and the power. Of the, and and his, his area of strength is in the air, just above the earth. That's the reason... He hates television so much. We're invading his province. We are destroying him at the seat of his power in the air. And he don't like that. As long as you stay on the earth, he can tolerate you. But when you get in the air, you're right up there in his country. And you're destroying him at his home base. Now, because Satan is a spirit, uh, he can move through space with incredible speed as other spirits can. You discover that in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 18. In fact, uh, spirits... Uh, like God, uh, can be wherever their thought life is. They can think to be in a place, and that places them in that place. 
and you in your resurrected state will be able to move through the universe the same by not by the movement of velocity uh, but by thought you want to be there and you will be you will be there that's the way spirits are at this present time it is significant that the designation prince in the bible is also given to deity as, as to Jehovah. That's found in Daniel chapter 8 and verse 11. And so prince is a designation given to Christ. That's in Isaiah 9 and 6 and the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 15 and the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5 it is also a designation that's given to Christ. It is a name given to the chief priests of the temple. You find that in Isaiah uh, chapter 43 and verse 28. It's also a name given to a nobleman and the kings in Isaiah 10 and 8 and Numbers 17 and 6. And so this reveals the strength, the power, the position that the devil has and that he possesses through having been one time, erstwhile, an archangel in heaven before being demoted and put out because of his rebellion in, in heaven. He is called uh, the, not only the prince of the air, he is called the prince of this world. Now, his throne is in the air, but he's called the prince of this world. In John chapter 12 and verse 31, and in John chapter 16 and verse 11, Satan is described as the prince of this world. This means the unregenerated world, not, not, not our spiritual world. It means that the world which has fallen from grace and away from God, the world that follows him in his desires, you know, to serve him, uh, that's the world where he is the king and the prince in that world. Uh, he is also called, besides the prince of the world, he is called the prince of darkness. In Ephesians 6 and 12, Satan is described as the prince of darkness, that he is the prince of darkness. This reveals his black nature, darkness, that there is no light in him whatsoever in any way. His complete disregard for truth and for intelligence, uh, there's no light, it's all dark. All his speeches are lies. All of his works are camouflaged. Uh, there is no light in him. All of his works are black and dark, and he is indeed, uh, by all means, the prince of darkness. You must know that. You must realize that. And never expect any light to come from that area. In Matthew 12 and 24, it describes him as a prince of devils, that he is over all the uh, spirits in the spirit world that we were studying in our last lesson, that he is their prince. In being the God of this world, not just the prince of this world, but the God of this world, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, it says, he is called the God of this world. It says, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. People that refuse to believe in God and in truth and in the Bible and in the church and in heaven and in hell, the Bible says, take it or leave it, the Bible says that you have been blinded intellectually blinded, by a thing called the God of this world. He is called, uh, the God, that's pretty strong, the God of this world. He has blinded the minds of them who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. So when a person says, no, I don't believe, I refuse to believe, that person has got the God of this world upon him, who is Satan. And he has been blinded. He got blinders on him, curtains in front of his eyes by the God of this world. This simply means that men and women uh, worship a spirit which they do not realize and recognize and to know they've been deceived into it. And so Satan is the God of this world, and he is that in, 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 in pagan people. And pagan people, he is their God. They, they have strange manifestations in their worship of idols. And, and I've had priests to tell me many times, as well, some are all... Uh, this idol has no power. It's the spirit of the idol. It's the spirit of the idol. And he says there are many spirits and we have to have many idols because the, there are many spirits and this spirit can do one thing and this spirit can do... Well, we know what they're doing, you see. They're worshiping the devil. They're not worshiping the idol. And that's where uh, Westerners miss these people. They think that these grotesque creatures that they have, you know, that are, that, that are to so terrible, they frighten you to look upon them. And they said, oh, yes, uh, well, uh, I made this. It's, I made it out, out of wood or I made it out of stone or I made it out of gold or silver. But there is something more to it. There, there is a power that enters it, 
You know, I've had them to show me the hole behind the idol and say, this is where he comes in and out. But he doesn't even need a hole. A spirit can go through a solid. And so that, that certainly is not necessary. So Satan is the god of pagan people. Uh, they have strange manifestations in their worship of idols. Uh, ultimately, it is the devil that they're serving. And, and they, think, they think it is a good spirit, of course, and it is Satan that they're serving. They should analyze it and see that it's not a good spirit of what it does. And, and John's Gospel, chapter 12 and verse 31, it says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The time will come when Satan will be removed from the air uh, he will be cast down from his place of hurting humans, of deceiving humans, of possess, possessing humans. And the Bible says he will be cast out. That means he's gone. Now, not only is this creature that we're talking about the prince of the air, the prince of the world, the prince of darkness, the god of this world, he is also a king. All right? And Revelation 9 and 11, it says, and they had... They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. And, and that's in Revelation 9, 9 and, and 11. So he usurps a, a position that says, in, in, the, in the pit of hell, uh, I'm king there. I am king there. Well, that's not, you know, a great place to be king over, uh, but he claimed his kingship, and so he is there. Now, we read in, in Ephesians 6 and 12, uh, you know, the details on, on the, the, the king, the, the, the king area, the kingdom of the devil. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The Christian does not battle uh, in, in, the, in the physical area, uh, in the mundane area. He says, we battle against principalities. A principality is an area over which a prince uh, rules. Against powers. That's those authorities that we were telling you about and issues that come forth from the devil demanding this and demanding that and causing, causing you to be subservient to his will and to his power against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. There are rulers, kings, that they rule the darkness. You just think of the darkness <laughs> in our world today. Pornographic literature, in, in, incest. Did you know incest is demonic? When you take a, a lovely little child in the home and abuse that child and you're an older person, you're worse than a brute, you know? I, I mean, a brute force, you see? And, and so we, the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we are identifying a demon power. Uh, we are identifying its sources from which it emerges from. We are showing you in the Word of God how it claims to be a king, a god, a prince, in the world that we live in today. But now you can get back to something uh, greater than that. This person, this creature that we're talking about, who is the devil, was one time an anointed cherub. Uh, he, he, was, he was one of the archangels of heaven. Ezekiel 28 and 14 says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. This meant that this creature covered the throne of God. That he was so magnificent and gloriously made, perf perfect in beauty, the Bible says, and perfect in wisdom, the Bible says. He says, I, I, I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou walked up and down in the midst of the, uh, the stones of fire before the throne of God. Who? Such, such, such glory, such majesty. And he fell from that state through ambition. He says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and I will be his God. And God was his creator. You can't do that. You cannot be a great as God. You can't do that because God is God and you're his creation. And the vessel cannot say to the one who made it, I will be something. The vessel has to be subservient uh, to the one that created uh, that vessel. And so we have him not only as an anointed uh, uh, cherub, we have him as an angel of light. So you have to come to know him. Uh, not only for what he was, but what he is. The devil is called an angel of light, and this has to do with his deception in the human realm, that where he where he appears as an angel of light. Uh, he is known by the word uh, Lucifer. Uh, in Isaiah 14 and 12, says, "How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer?" It says, "You're also known as the son of the morning." The sun, that's S-O-N. The sun of the morning. The brightness and the glories of a new day. You are the sun of the new day, of the new world, of the new light. 
Oh, he was a, place, a person highly esteemed in, in heaven. And, and so uh, he says, you are fallen uh, from heaven. And, and so, uh, and he also says about him here, says you are cut down to the ground. His, his activities uh, today are limited to the ground. In the air, he is the king. On the ground, he, he manipulates human beings. And listen what it says of him. It says, you that did weaken the nations. Every nation that's ever been weakened has been weakened by the devil. The weakness of our country today in its economics, in its politics, in its morals has been of the devil. You know, if the church only knew who its enemy was and go after him, they could destroy the works of the devil, which are the problems in our country today. Poverty is a demonic thing. Most people that are, are involved in poverty also are wasters. They've wasted everything God ever gave them, you see. Just put it down the drain. If they have money, they don't have any the next day. It's down the drain, you see. They're also wasters. So when they find Jesus, then they're not wasters anymore. And then they're not poverty stricken anymore. I know this from pastoring. People come right up out of nothing and become wealthy because they stop their wasting and they give their energies to God. Now, this person is called the anointed cherub, an angel of light. He's called Lucifer. And in Revelation 12 and 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil. Called the devil and Satan. You see, God wanted you to know his various names for identification purposes. Hey, it is so necessary to be able to identify a man or a person or an organization for identification purposes. God says this great dragon, he, he has been cast out. He is that old serpent. He is called the devil. He is called Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. It told you exactly what he did. He deceives the whole world, Africa, uh, India, you know, uh, Europe, America. He, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And so that's how they got here. Aren't you glad the word of God gives you the truth about these, these great things? And that verse, he, he was called a dragon. Uh, uh, that is in, in, in Revelation 12 and 3 also. And in Revelation 20 and verse 2 to 7, uh, you will find it. You should also read Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 29 and, and see exactly what we're talking about. And it also said there, he is called Satan. And, and uh, that is one of his titles uh, that he carries. We can't go into the meaning of it and all of that. Uh, if you did, each one of these would become an entire lesson. That's where we expect you to go deeper into the Word of God and, and discover the meanings of these because in each of these names is how he functions. His names uh, relate to his functions, that he functions among human beings as a deceiver, as an angel of light, as a herder. And he's also known in the Bible as a serpent. And, and it, uh, it began uh, way back in Genesis 3 and 14 where Eve said, uh, uh, the serpent has beguiled me. The serpent, the serpent has, has beguiled me. And there are many other scriptures for it. That's on page 16 of your teaching syllabus there. He's further called Beelzebub. Now, now each of these, as I said, could make a tremendous lesson. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 25, it is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub. Be, the word Beelzebub means the prince of devils. How much more shall they call them of his household? Uh, if people misname you and they call you uh, names that are bad, remember they did Jesus the same way. And, and, and that doesn't mean anything. Just forget it. Just, just forget it. In Matthew 12 and, and verse uh, 24, it says, And when the Pharisees heard it, uh, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And, and so uh, uh, Satan... And the devil, as you know him, uh, one of his names is the word uh, Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Also, he is called Belial. In 2 Corinthians 6 and 15, what con concord hath Christ with Belial? It's in other places in the Word of God. We'd like you to, to follow that up also. We have a whole page for you to make notes right across from page uh, 16 here. What part hath he believeth with an infidel? They don't have any parts together. <laughs> they, they don't have any parts. The devil and Jesus have no relationship. You better believe me. They have no relationship whatsoever. He is also called an adversary. Now you're getting down to something interesting because you understand that more than you do Beelzebub, you see, an adversary. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, it says, be sober, uh, be, vi uh, be vigilant. I mean, by, by sober, it doesn't mean alcoholic. Yeah, some people say, hee, 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 for a whole life. And that's the only further their brains go. 
Uh, be sober. Start thinking intelligently about where did I come from? Uh, where am I going to? What does life mean here? Is this life a preparation for a greater life, or is this life a totality all in its own? Be sober. That means evaluate life. Understand life. Don't be a fool. You know, uh, understand what life is all about and what death is all about and what the new world on the other side is all about. Be sober. Be vigilant. That means watchful. Now, neighbor, you can go through this life, and if you're not careful, you'll be snared. You'll be snared by the devil. Millions of people have been snared by the devil. I can guarantee you that most of the people that are alcoholics never intended to be one. They were snared by the devil. <clears throat> God does not want you to be snared by the devil. He says your adversary, the devil, be vigilant. That's watchful. Uh, don't, don't be caught by the devil anywhere. Just be watchful. Your adversary, which is the devil, uh, he says, as a roaring lion, uh, he goes about seeking whom uh, he may devour. And so uh, you have to know that you have an adversary. An adversary is one that fights you. An adversary is one that comes against you. An adversary is one that looks and seeks out every way that he possibly can uh, to destroy you. You have to stand against your adversary. He is also called the accuser of the brethren. Uh, I would like to relate to you uh, Revelation 12 and 10, and also Job chapter 1, uh, verses 7 and 8, that he is an accuser of the brethren. And, and, and sometimes it's self-accusation, you know, self-accusation, an accuser. He is the accuser. He'll say, you're not right, you're not good, you're not saved. He knows he's a liar, but he is an accuser of the brethren in untruth. Don't believe what he says. If you've confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're saved. The Bible says so. <laughs> so you rest your strength upon that great fact. Now, also, uh, th this person is called the enemy. I think you should, uh, you know, get, get, get into that. Uh, your enemy is not a preacher. Your enemy is not a church. Your enemy is not a deacon. Your enemy is not a Sunday school teacher. Your enemy is the devil. In, in Matthew uh, 13 and, and, and 39, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Now, here Jesus is giving you the totality of human life. In Matthew chapter 13 and verse uh, 39, he, he spoke about, uh, and, and it's like the church, that, uh, that there, there, was a, there, there was seed planted in there that wasn't good seed. It was, it was bad seed. It was weeds. And he says, the one that sowed that is the devil. Wherever you have something good, the devil always throws something bad into it. <laughs> you better believe me. He says, he's the one that sows the bad stuff in good things. The harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the enemies, are the angels. So your enemy is the devil. He is also the tempter. That's Matthew 4 and 3. He's also called the wicked one. That's Matthew 13 and 19. He is also called the thief, the thief. Uh, that is in John 10 and 10. The thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So the thief is the devil. And, and, and the one that heals and saves and, and helps is Jesus. He is the one. Also in John 8 and 44, uh, he is called a murderer. That, that one of his names is murderer. Uh, let, let's read that. John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and, the abode, and abode not in truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Whew. <laughs> that gave you some insight. Study that slowly and, and, and see what you come up with. That's John 8, 44, that that enemy of yours, the devil, is also a murderer. In 1 Peter 5 and 8, he is called a roaring lion. Yeah, uh, but I'd like to tell you that I think he's lost all of his teeth. It's all roar. And, and if you're going to run and be scared because of a roar, uh, you're, you're going to lose battles. But remember, uh, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he can outroar him. He can put him to flight, and you better believe it. In John 8 and 44, he is also called a liar. And in Acts 10 and 38, he is called an oppressor that oppresses human persons. He is an oppressor that oppresses people. In 2 Corinthians 11 and 3, he is called a corrupter of minds. 
But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. There are just thousands of people that he has corrupted their minds from the simplicity of Christ. Oh, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. There's an enemy out there. you got to know him. Someone says, well, you exalt the devil when you talk about him. Hey, you better ask the devil. Uh, I don't exalt him. I, I, I reveal him, and I, I, I destroy him, and I cast him down. He is a defeated foe. He is a defeated foe. And there are other names that he's known by. Uh, we want you to understand those and come to know them and, uh, and to come to be the person that Jesus Christ wants you to be.